Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Bob Weaver asked me to do a walk around on the saw vise. He wanted a little more detail on how it worked. Well, this is a pretty common style of saw vise. Uh, it does have a couple of extra features that you don't find on all of them. One of them is this lever handle. This type of saw vise was designed to be portable and adaptable. You could carry it around in your toolbox and if you needed to sharpen your saw you could clamp it to a bench like that and then you could tilt it back and forth to get the different angles that you needed to sharpen your saw at. Or you can do like I'm doing here. Or you can do like I'm doing here and clamp it to a 2x6 mounted in my bench vise. Still have the same ability to move the vise back and forth to get to different angles. Now this I just used because I wanted to do my saw sharpening on my work, woodworking bench. I've got the metal working bench over there across the way. I wanted to do the saw sharpening demo on my woodworking bench because quite frankly it looks nicer. This little adjuster here lets you close up the jaws. If you want to follow a crosscut saw with a sloped gullet, which gives it a little bit more room in the gullet and changes the profile of the tooth a little bit, some people think it cuts better. I kind of like it myself. You can loosen up this lever and then set the saw vise at an angle so that you're filing flat. It makes it easier to hold the file and maintain the angle all the way down the teeth. This long lever let you adjust it easily. This saw vise has a problem. On this screw, there's a spot where the saw vise was evidently clamped a lot. When you get into a, a thin bench, this bolt gets really loose. So I try and clamp it onto something two inch and a half thick or so. This two by six works pretty good. That gets it up into the area where the Threads are still good on the bowl. If you're buying one of these, they're pretty common and they're inexpensive. Uh, there was a lot of them made and they got used, but not a whole lot. So they more than likely ended up someplace in a corner because you only pulled it out when you needed to sharpen a saw. They lasted through the centuries quite well. Most of them run between 10 and $15. Now, the last time I bought an inexpensive one was about five years ago and we all know prices have gone up dramatically so the prices may be higher now but they're really not a, a high dollar high value item it's something that got used a lot and there was a bunch of them Big thing any saw vise needs to be able to do is clamp your saw securely and you need to be able to draw it down and hold it on the bench. If it's rocking all over the place, it's really hard to make a, a good job out of filing your saw. When you're looking for a saw vise, having one that tilts, that's a nice thing. Not all of them do. I prefer it myself. This uh, lever arm letting me move it back and forth that makes it a lot easier to use when I got this one home I found something that was a little odd about it it didn't sit straight and it, it didn't want to lock down right they had this piece on the wrong side of the casting so I loosened it up took it apart put it back together the right way and it worked just fine not everybody knows what the heck this is uh, they may think it's a crossbow, who knows. 
but you'll find them in flea markets and antique shops assembled in a variety of ways that make absolutely no sense. Look at it, make sure it's, it's in good working condition and all the pieces move and everything works. Because if the one you pick up isn't right, there's another one real close by. Now I had this one and I kept reading about uh, better ways of sharpening saws. And pe people talked about saw vices that had jigs on them that let you sharpen the saw more correctly. And uh, they talked about having all kinds of attachments and pieces and parts that made it so that the angles were held straight and, and everything worked much easier. I thought at the time, since I was new to sharpening saws, maybe one of those would help me. Well, I kept my eyes open and I found one. Somebody on eBay listed this as the wrong thing. I forget exactly what they did call it, but it wasn't what it really is. Now this wooden block, that's not a standard feature of a saw vise. This one originally had a clamp just like that one. But when things are broken, you usually get a better deal on them. And I have a policy when I go on eBay to buy anything. I think what it's worth, I bid that amount, and then I don't look at it. Evidently, the amount that I thought this was worth was what everybody else thought it was worth, too. Because I won. When it came to me, it didn't look this good. This wire frame here was bent all twisted up. The a holder for the file was bent. These little pieces were assembled, but they were rusted so tightly that they wouldn't move. Probably the reason I got it for the bid that I did. Also having the mounting clamp broken didn't hurt my bid at all. I recognized that the mounting clamp is a nice thing to have, but I figured I could get around it, and so I have. I bolted a wood block to the bottom of it. Now I clamp it into my bench vise. Holds up really well. This saw vise is designed to let you clamp your saw. And it uses a lever rather than a screw, which is nice, it's quicker, but it's dangerous. You can overpower that arm here pretty easily and break that uh, saw vise. If you get hand handed on it, you'll just snap it right off. Because of the way the file is mounted in the saw, you can change the angle to match the saw. Once you've got, you loosen this screw, spin the file around until it lines up with a tooth. You set the angle, you lock that down, and now whatever tooth you're filing on, as long as you're filing in this direction, it's going to be exactly the same. The only problem I have with this saw vise, because of the way this works, I can't reach that much of the blade. I have to take off the tote in order to sharpen all the way down to the end. Because on this saw, this part of the vise won't go up over the handle. It just won't make it. The way the guide works, it lets me sharpen eight and a half inches of saw, and then I have to unclamp and move the saw. Not really a big problem. On a 24 inch saw, you have to move it three times. That's pretty much normal for a saw vise anyways. Vice jaws on this one are about the same. So if you want to keep the plate in between the jaws, which cuts down on the vibration and keeps the noise down, that screeching sound like the fingernails on a blackboard is most disturbing. But it does make it so that the saw is exactly the same angle on every tooth all the way down. It's a very nice thing to have. 
I've discovered that once I got a handle on how to do the saw filing, unless I'm working on a saw that has really, really fine teeth, which is still a problem for me, uh, I don't use this saw vise. This is my go-to. Now I have got this little guy, which has been in the stack to be sharpened for quite a while. It's about 18 teeth per inch, and when I finally get around to doing this one, I'm going to use this saw vise. Just because it's going to help me with so many fine little teeth, maintaining the angle and making sure it's straight. Also, somebody abused this saw terribly. It looks like they chopped down on something right here in the middle. Now this is a Distin number 68, call it Gent Saw, and I think it's cool and I wanted to fix it. So I brought it home and that's set on the bench now for the better part of five years. Someday. This vise doesn't have a lever, it has a thumb nut. Works quite well because it has teeth on the mating surface between the two parts so that they only go into certain positions. This one is infinitely variable. You can set it anywhere in its range. And that lever lets you lock it down tight enough that it doesn't slide around. So Bob, that's the story of my saw vices. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.